we've all been there. That sinking feeling in your stomach when you realize something important is gone. Your keys, your phone, that special memento vanished. You tear the house apart, nothing. It's like it disappeared into thin air. But what if I told you the answer to finding your lost stuff might not be where you think? It's not out there. The solution could be inside your own head. I'm not talking about magic tricks. I'm talking about the power of your imagination. I know this sounds crazy, but trust me, I've been there too. Let me tell you about Sarah. Sarah had just moved into her dream apartment, and over time, she filled it with beautiful furniture, pieces she'd saved up for years to buy. Then one day, she came home to an empty house. Turns out her maid had been quietly stealing her belongings, selling them off piece by piece. Can you imagine? The violation, the helplessness. Sarah felt like her whole world had been turned upside down. She called the police, of course. But with little evidence, they couldn't do much. Sarah spent weeks scouring secondhand shops, online listings, anything, hoping to get a glimpse of her stolen treasures. But nothing turned up. It seemed like her furniture was gone for good. Feeling hopeless, Sarah stumbled upon the teachings of a man named Neville Goddard. Neville believed that our imagination isn't just about daydreaming. It holds a power that can shape our reality. See, most of us go through life assuming the world outside dictates how we feel. But Neville flipped that idea on its head. He taught that it's our inner state, our imaginings, that actually create the circumstances around us. Desperate, Sarah decided to give it a try. At first it felt weird, even silly. She'd sit quietly, close her eyes, and picture her apartment exactly as it was, filled with her beloved furniture. Not just seeing the images in her mind, but feeling the textures, the smells, the joy of being surrounded by her things. She persisted, vividly imagining this scene, night after night. It wasn't just about seeing her furniture in her mind's eye. Sarah tapped into all her senses. She'd imagine the smooth, cool touch of her marble coffee table, the worn softness of her favorite armchair, the faint scent of old books lingering on her shelves. Most importantly, she focused on the feelings these items brought her, the comfort of sinking into her couch after a long day, the pride of hosting friends around her dining table. Night after night, Sarah revisited this scene in her mind. At first, it felt like play acting, but slowly something shifted. The images became more vivid, the emotions more real. It was as if she wasn't just remembering her apartment, but actually stepping into it, experiencing it fully in her imagination. And that's where the true power of Neville's teachings clicked for Sarah. It wasn't about wishing for her furniture back. It was about creating such a strong inner feeling of already having it, that the external reality had no choice but to catch up. Of course, she didn't expect her furniture to magically reappear in her living room, but a deep sense of knowing settled into her. A knowing that her belongings were still out there, and somehow they would find their way back to her. Weeks turned into months. Sarah kept up her imaginative practice, but she'd also returned to the practicalities of life. One day, while running errands, a familiar figure caught her eye. A flash of recognition. It was her former maid, walking with a man Sarah didn't recognize. A jolt ran through Sarah. Could it be? Without thinking, she rushed to confront them. Turns out the man was the maid's accomplice. Overwhelmed with guilt, fear, and Sarah's unwavering certainty, the truth spilled out. They'd been storing her furniture, waiting for the right time to sell it off. With this information, the police were finally able to act. And wouldn't you know it, Sarah's precious furniture was recovered almost exactly as she'd envisioned it. Now, you might think Sarah got lucky. Sure, some would call it a coincidence. But Sarah believes differently. She believes that her unwavering focus, the vividness of her imagination, created a kind of beacon, a pull that guided her right back to her belongings. Think about it. We lose things because for a moment, our attention wavers. We set our keys down without truly registering where. We misplace a cherished object while distracted by other thoughts. 
What if that focus, that concentrated attention, is the key to finding them again? The next time you lose something, don't just tear your house apart. Take a moment. Sit quietly. Picture the object in your mind with absolute clarity. Feel its weight, its texture. Recall the joy it brings you. Hold that feeling steady. Trust me, it's a lot more powerful than just frantic searching. You might be surprised where it leads you. Remember, sometimes the answers lie not in the world around us, but within. Sarah's story isn't just about finding lost keys or missing heirlooms. It taps into something much deeper, a principle that stretches far beyond the literal. The idea that our imagination isn't just a source of entertainment, it's a powerful tool that can truly shape our lives. Think about the athlete who envisions themselves crossing the finish line before a race. The entrepreneur who sees their business thriving long before it makes a profit. The artist who imagines their masterpiece hanging in a gallery even before the first brushstroke. Are they just daydreaming? Or are they laying down a blueprint, an energetic pattern that their actions, their decisions, consciously or unconsciously, start to follow? Science backs this up. Studies show that mental rehearsal, visualization, activates the same neural networks as actually performing the action, strengthening the pathways in our brains that make our goals more attainable. It's the concept behind the phrase, fake it till you make it. By truly believing, by vividly feeling the reality of our desires, we start to act, speak, and make choices differently. Choices that bring us closer to what we want. Of course, it's not magic. Imagination alone won't make your dreams appear overnight. But it primes the pump, orients you towards your goals, and opens you up to opportunities you might have otherwise missed. So, the next time you aim to achieve something, don't discount the power of seeing it clearly in your mind's eye first. Want to give this a try? Here's a simple exercise to get you started. Think of something you've misplaced recently. Not your life savings, mind you. Let's start small. Maybe a favorite pen, a book, a piece of jewelry. Now close your eyes. Try to remember the last time you saw that object. Where was it? What were you doing? Picture the item itself with crystal clarity. Focus on its shape, its color, any unique markings it has. Feel its texture in your mind's hands. Does it have a particular smell? Can you hear any sounds associated with it? Most importantly, recall the feeling that item brings you. Joy, comfort, maybe a sense of accomplishment. Hold that feeling steady. Let it fill you up. Now, with this image, this sensation in your mind, trust that you will be guided toward your lost object. It might not be an instant solution, but keep this practice in the back of your mind, especially when searching. Whether you believe in literal manifestation or the simple power of focused attention, I hope this video has given you a new perspective on the way you search for lost things. Remember, sometimes the most powerful tools are the ones we carry within us. If you found this helpful, or if Sarah's story resonated with you, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with someone who could use a little boost of imaginative power. It really helps the channel out. And if you want more videos exploring the mind-body connection, techniques for achieving your goals, or simply fascinating stories, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You never know what you might discover next. And let me know in the comments, what have you lost and what are you going to use your imagination to find? I'm always fascinated to hear your stories. Until next time, keep that inner light shining and don't underestimate the power of your own mind.